I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's on days like this that uh, we are somewhat more cognizant of the passage of time. Even though our services are uh, regular on Sunday and same time and liturgies don't change all that much, um, still, uh, we get to a day like this, uh, we know time is, uh, time is passing. We're, we're getting uh, older, aren't we? Yes. Uh, you may have heard that uh, today is uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, we're moving into a new season soon, uh, epiphany season soon. And uh, we may have a little sadness, uh, really, moving out of the holidays. Or, or we may be real happy that they're done one way or another. In all of this, of course, uh, God is to be center most in our minds. And he, luckily for us, never changes. He is always uh, the same. And as we will hear today, Jesus himself knows us very, very well in our hearts. And he reveals our hearts to us. We think on that as we be, prepare ourselves for worship. Greetings to you this morning. Welcome to our service here on the last day of the year here at Trinity Lutheran Church. And uh, it is a fifth Sunday. Now, uh, as I mentioned at the uh, congregational meeting back in November uh, for this church year, uh, at popular request. What does that mean, popular request? That means two or three people ask. In this bunch, that's popular, all right? 
Okay. By popular request, we are bringing back the matins service. So I hope you remember that from the past. Uh, it's a little more uh, liturgical. It has a little more uh, chanting in it than uh, usual. Uh, we've tried to help you out. If you'll notice that in the Venite and the Te Deum, you've got little marks there that'll help you for when the uh, um, tune changes, take a breath, you know, that kind of thing. And it may take us a, a little bit to get along with it and remember it from past years. But uh, I'm hoping that it, it will uh, it will be uh, new. It won't be that new to you. So, uh, with that being said, that's the service as it's uh, printed there for your in your uh, worship folders. And uh, we open with the first hymn listed there, verses 1 through 7. We gather this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. 
Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. As our Savior Jesus Christ said to the paralytic and to the woman who washed his feet with her penitent tears, so also I say to you, by his authority and command, your sins have been forgiven. Please be seated. Blessed be our God. Well, come, let us worship Him. Oh, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let Very good. Well done. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 11. And then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength and spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what he, his eyes see, nor make a decision by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Also righteousness will be his belt about his loins, and faithfulness the belt about his waist. Our psalm portion comes from Psalm 89. For who in the skies is comparable to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty is like the Lord, a God greatly feared in the counsel of the holy ones? O Lord God of hosts, who is like you, O mighty Lord? Our epistle is given to us by St. Paul as he writes to the churches of Galatia, chapter 4. Now I say, as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from a slave, although he is owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. So also we. 
While we were children, we were held in bondage under the elemental things of the world. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Let us rise for the gospel. Our gospel is given to us by St. Luke in his gospel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 22. And when the days of their purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what was said of the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle dove or two young pigeons. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came into the, in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law... Then he, Simeon, took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother were amazed at the things that were being said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and for a sign to be opposed. And a sword will pierce even your own soul, to the end that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And there was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. And she was advanced in years, and had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, serving night and day with fastings and prayers. At that very moment she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city of Nazareth, and the child continued to grow and become strong, increasing in wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Please be seated for the hymn of the day.
grace, peace, mercy, and truth be multiplied unto you through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Amen. Of the, uh, the long gospel reading today, we take one verse as our theme. Verse 35. Simeon speaking, And a sword will pierce even your own soul to the end that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Dear Christian friends, have you uh, got the letdown yet? The Christmas letdown, I mean. The after Christmas doldrums. Or perhaps maybe the holiday was not up to snuff for you. Maybe you weren't feeling real good. Maybe you got sick or something. Or maybe relatives got sick and couldn't visit. Or maybe friends couldn't come over the way they were planning to. Are you in a kind of post-holiday slump? Perhaps Christmas has come and gone and you're still wondering, what was all the fuss about? Why did we do that? Why did we go to all that trouble? Well, you're not alone. It happens to a lot of people this time of year. And it's not just the lack of light outside. It's, it's just this, this whole time. We put a lot of effort, we put a lot of energy into these holidays. And if they don't go right or we feel they don't go right, you know, we're, we're let down. Now, imagine the shepherds on that first Christmas. They're basking in the glow of the glory of the Lord, the kabod Adonai. That's the same thing that led the people of Israel through the wilderness. Wow. That's, that's the same thing that came upon the temple when it was finished by Solomon. Wow. That's the same thing that Isaiah saw when he was lifted up into heaven. Amazing. The angel host is singing to them. Boy, what a production. Broadway couldn't even touch it. And then all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. The angels left, and the sky was dark once more. What did they do? What did the, what did the shepherds do? Did they sit down and cry? Did they weep and lament to one another and say, oh, rats? Now what are we going to do? No. They got up and they took the uh, guidance of the angels and they went to find Jesus in Bethlehem. Because they believed. They believed the message of the angels. They believed in a Messiah. They believed that the Christ had indeed come. Their faith lifted them beyond the doldrums of their job and of the problems of the moment to the joy of salvation. What is our reaction to the Christ child? What is our reaction to the babe of Bethlehem? Is it to believe? Is it to trust? Or already, only a few days later, are we doubting? Are we fearing? Are we thinking, now what? Now what do we do? What's next? My dear Christian friends, there is no third option. Either believe or fear. No compromise. We must take a stand, as old Simeon foretold. And Christ is our revealer of hearts. He will reveal where our priorities are, where our hearts truly are, where our minds truly are as we enter a new year. Many will be offended and are offended by Christ. They reject him and fall. But many also see him as Lord and King. 
Savior and Redeemer. And then use the next year for however long as God allows it to serve Him in love and devotion. Now, I don't need to tell you that a lot of people are offended by the biblical Christ. The biblical Christ. Not the nice guy Jesus. Not too many people are offended by him. They're not offended by the Jesus who talks about turning cheeks. They're not offended by the Jesus who feeds 5,000. They're not offended by the Jesus of the world, huh? the bread king. They're not offended by the Jesus who is a really super nice guy who tells light, nice little parables and uh, has little children sitting on his lap and all that. They're not offended by that Jesus. But they're really offended by the real Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus that tells you to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That Jesus, they don't pretty much care for all that much. That, that Jesus, uh, they don't like. when they, uh, Jesus that says to the legalists and the super religious out there uh, that, that uh, think they're holier than everybody else, you brood of vipers. <laughs> they don't. They don't pretty much like that Jesus at all. The Jews of Jesus' day were torn. Herod, they had to, he attempted to kill Jesus. He didn't want any, he didn't want any uh, competition. He wanted to be a sole king. He didn't realize. He didn't know. Of course, he was an Edomian. He wasn't even a Jew. But he, 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 he pretended that he was Jewish. And he, he probably read some about the prophecies of the Christ and everything, but he really didn't believe it. If he had believed it, he would have known that Jesus is not going to be a king of his stinking little kingdom of Judea, which, which he was only king because Augustus kind of liked the guy, is all, that's all. It wasn't because he was such a great king or such a great guy. Jesus was in competition, but that's the way he saw it. He saw it as competition, he tried to kill him. Then, they, then came along, of course, the scribes and Pharisees. Well, they tried to kill him too. And if they couldn't try to kill him, they tried to shut him up all the time. They opposed him because he called them out for what they were, hypocrites, legalists, who was trying to save themselves and everybody else by works, as though somehow works could save you, like, like a, you could do enough to uh, pay for all your sins. That, that, that's not, that's not going to happen. And of course, on the cross, he was ridiculed, mocked. They made fun of him. They laughed at him, laughed at, at the Son of God, hanging on that implement of torture. To the Gentiles also, he was a stone of stumbling. The apostles were often persecuted. And every single one of them, with the exception of John, who was allowed to die in his old age. Every single one of them were persecuted and killed. They were martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And still today. The history of the church is full of martyrs. Oh, we may not have a lot of them here in this country yet. But there are around the world. When you're, when you're passing through the narthex there, the, the entryway, uh, take a look at that magazine called Barnabas. Take a look at that once in a while. That, that lists for you. That talks about the persecutions that are going on all around the world. Did you know there was a vibrant church, a Christian church in Iran? Yeah. Under strict Islamic law, and yet a church, a Christian church, thrives there underground. And it is being persecuted every day. Every day people are being arrested. They go to prison, they disappear, never to be heard from again. Many of them die. There's Christians in Syria. There's Christians in Iraq. One of the places that Christians are persecuted the most today is Pakistan. Hundreds of Christians are being jailed and, and, and some executed. Same is true in India. But the Hindu religion does not abide any more than the Muslim religion does Christian belief. Mary and Joseph heard great things about their child. But this strange prophecy about the hearts of many being revealed, they were to remind them that Jesus is a dividing point. 
He is a dividing point for all humankind. And he's a dividing point for every individual person. What is their reaction to the Christ child? What is their reaction to the Messiah? What is their reaction to the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, Savior of the world? What is their reaction? Are we willing to suffer rejection? Are we really to suffer opposition? Are we really to suffer even unto death? For our faith, our belief, our acceptance, our reception of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in our lives? Or not? There's no third option. There is no third option. That's it. That, that's what Simeon means by, by a sword will pierce even Mary's soul. Mary herself will have to come to that fork in the road. One time, Mary, who Jesus uh, was following Jesus, he went into a house to do some preaching, and he was saying some pretty astounding things. He was talking about the end of the world and whatever. And Mary sent her sons or other sons into the house saying, Go get him. He's lost his mind. That's Mary. Yeah. That's Mary, the mother of Christ, said, He's lost his mind. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Luckily, she came back. So that she stood at the foot of the cross as a witness. My dear Christian friends, God planned it this way. God planned that Jesus Christ would be a dividing point. God planned that Jesus Christ would reveal the hearts of people. He set up Christ to confound the self-righteous and the wisdom of this evil world. God wants to force us to look into ourselves, to what do we trust for our salvation? Do we trust in our own holiness, our own goodness, our own keeping of the law, or do we trust in Christ and his blood to cover us from God's wrath and bring us to himself in heaven? And that's why we see him as Lord and King, and that's why we serve him in love and devotion. And that, my friends, gives us a purpose for the next year. Again, however long it may last. This child brings righteousness to all who look to him as the only hope for salvation. But in the first, in order to do this, people have to understand they need salvation. That's what the law is there for. Paul says, I would not have known I sinned unless the law told me and showed me I sinned. And so that's why we have it for it. That's why I preach the law. That's why we talk about repentance. That's why we have confession and absolution in the beginning of the service. That's why we do that. Because that's the first part. Now, now I grant you that, that an understanding that you are a sinner is also given by God. Okay? You're, you're not going to come to that uh, spiritual designation on your own either. And that's why the repentance and conversion are, are really intertwined. You can't really separate them at all. They're, 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 they're together. The Holy Spirit does both. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to convict you, to show you your sin, and then to convince you and show you your Savior. Convict, convince. Both things are done by the Holy Spirit. You don't have to worry about it, whether you've made a bad decision. Hmm? Whether maybe you have accepted the wrong thing. Because the Holy Spirit's in charge here. The Holy Spirit leads you. The Holy Spirit guides you. The Holy Spirit comes to you through the Word. Sometimes that Word is just a word that you memorized, maybe when you were a kid. Or a word that you heard in a, in a, in a Bible uh, class or, or in a sermon somewhere. And so you've got that word rolling around in your head. And the Holy Spirit kind of uses that and pokes at you and brings you to repentance and faith. That's what happened to Anna at some point in her life. She was 84 years old. She's been a believer all that time. The Holy Spirit guided her to stay there in the temple guided her to serve in the temple, to serve people. She probably did a lot of good for people that they came to the temple. Sometimes they probably needed something. Maybe they, needed, maybe they just needed her to watch their kids. Maybe she did that. We don't know. We're not told a whole lot else about her. But, but she served the Lord, and she served people in the temple. 
day and night. Why? She had a purpose in life, and her purpose was to stay alive until she was able to see the Messiah, like Simeon. If Christmas is to mean more to us than just another round of buying and selling, another round of giving and getting, then we need to serve Christ. We need to speak of his deliverance of the sins of the world. This is one service every single believer can render to God. And at the same time, do great favor to all those around. If Anna can do it, you can do it. So... Are we maybe a little down, a little depressed, sad? Maybe. Are we not so uh, looking forward to that uh, note from the HOA telling us to take down our Christmas lights? We don't want to do that. Are we putting off, taking all the stuff off the tree and stick it in the attic for another year? Don't be disappointed. Don't be depressed. By God's grace, we have faith. By God's grace and His grace alone, we believe. We have risen up with the angels in those fields of Bethlehem, and we have the hope of eternal life. And now, like Simeon and like Anna, let us share this joy with the world around us. No Christmas is a bad Christmas if we take our joy from the fact that because God is in Christ, we are saved. So go ahead. It's all right. Take down your decorations. Hang up your lights. uh, You know, put them them back in the box, I mean. Put them back in the box. Put your ornaments back in the box. You know, take your stockings down. Put them... Put them away wherever. Okay, go about with your life. All right, you have something to do. You have something to keep you busy for the next 12 months. God allows the world to last that long. Uh, Come back tonight if you want to hear more about that. You've got something to do. You have a purpose in your existence. Your purpose is to serve God in your worship in your prayers, to serve God in speaking the gospel to those around you, and to serve others in love and kindness, and to be that beacon of light and salt in the earth that points to that Christ child. Let the babe of Bethlehem stay with you, not just today, not just this week, but let the babe of Bethlehem go with you and stay in you and be in your heart every day from now on. Amen. And now the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in true faith through Christ Jesus, your Lord. Amen. All right, bear with me here a minute. Um, I know it says all stand, but that's for another canticle. So you may be seated, please. Again, note the red line denotes the change in tune. Some of you might say change in pitch, whatever, okay? If you need the music, you will find the music on page 223 in the hymnal. If you're one that reads music and you want to do that, you can do that, okay? So let us praise our Lord. Yeah.
O Lord, now hear our prayers. Most merciful Father, from whom comes every good gift, we give you praise and thanks for all your mercies. For your goodness that has created us, your bounty that has sustained us, your discipline that has corrected us, and your patience that has borne with us, your love that has redeemed us, and your Son, our Savior. Your Spirit, our Comforter, your Church, our home, the lives of all godly people, and for the hope of the life to come. Grant unto us hearts to love you and enable us to show our thanks for all your benefits by giving ourselves to you and conforming to your perfect will. Fill your church with all truth and peace, where she is in error, reformer, where she is in want, furnisher, where she is in right, strengthen and confirmer, where she is divided, heal her. Give your ministers your Holy Spirit and enable them to fulfill their office with faithfulness. Bestow your blessing upon all in authority over us and grant them your grace and guidance that they may always work for the good of all people. We commend to you all who are afflicted with poverty, sickness, or other trouble of body, sorrow of mind. Grant them answers to their prayers and cause their present sufferings to bring them eternal good. Grant us your grace to follow Christ and bring us to those things which you have promised those who believe. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen, and who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. If a person withdraws from this sacrament, he will daily become more and more callous and cold, and will at last disregard it altogether. To avoid this, we must indeed examine heart and conscience. Is that the kind of person who desires to be right with God? Now the more this is done, the more will the heart be warmed and enkindled, that it may not become entirely cold. The congregation will now come forward for the Lord's Supper. Take and eat. This is the body of the Lord. This is his blood shed for your sins. May the strength and preserve you from faith and to life everlasting. Amen. Depart in God's peace. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up unto death, even the death of the cross, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ, given for you for the remission of sins. This is the blood of your Lord shed for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up for you on Calvary's cross. 
for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sacrificed for you on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the blood of your Savior shed for you. is the body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the body of your Savior Jesus Christ sacrificed for you on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up for you and your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sacrificed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the blood of your Savior, shed for you and the forgiveness of your sins. Now may this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true and saving faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Depart in God's peace. Amen. O Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin. Neither run into any kind of danger, but that in all our doing, being offered, ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Please join now in the closing hymn.
Please be seated. A very good morning once again to everyone. Good to have you here, as always. Um, fellowship will return next Sunday. Okay, It's still holiday this weekend, so no fellowship this morning. Uh, next Sunday. Uh, also, there will be no Bible class on Tuesday or Saturday, either one. I'll be out of town for this week. Okay. So I'll uh, leave it up to you. There will, however, be a service tonight. Yes, there will be a service tonight. Uh, New Year's Eve service, as is our tradition and custom uh, for the small band of um, people who like to uh, come out for that purpose. So uh, yeah, 7 o'clock communion service uh, tonight here at the, uh, at the church. Thank you. See you then. Hope.